Hey everybody, welcome to the Corn Team, Brad Corn's podcast today. I have got a special treat today. This has been um, one of the most unbelievable couple of years in my life. And uh, the journey that I've been on over the last couple of years has been, has led me to uh, this gentleman that you're going to hear from today. Uh, Inc. Magazine named him number one small business guru. Actually, this is somebody you've even, uh, he's been around for years, 30 (laughs) plus years. Um, Always, and I don't know if you know this or not, but you are always in the top five must read books of all time every single year. If I just Google top books in real estate, you know, and I'm looking for real estate books, everybody's list has the e myth or E Myth Revisited as one of the top five books. Guys, we have Michael E. Gerber with us today, and I have had the unbelievable, like unfathomable pleasure to actually be working with Michael directly. So, uh, Michael, I'm glad to have you on the on the uh, podcast today. I'm delighted to be here, Brad. Really, really, really delighted. Yeah, I tell you what, it's it is amazing that it's hard to tell people this so that they grasp what they're what what I'm about to say. But the E Myth book came out what over 30 years ago, right? Yep, 1986. 1986, and and I try to say this, but I, it fumbles the words every time I say it. <laughs> every year, the book has sold more books than the previous year over the last 30 years. <laughs> is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's correct. All right, cool. So the purpose... It's kind of astonishing when you think about it. In fact, the publisher, Harper, um, still hasn't gotten accustomed to it. <laughs> because it's the only book, the only book at Harper that's true of. Now, I'm talking about every book at Harper. In every field that that's true of. They still can't deal with it. <laughs> Yeah. And they never promoted the book. So nobody ever did a book launch for the E Myth or the E Myth Revisited or E Myth Mastery or any of the books that followed. Never did a book launch. I never did a book launch. Yeah. I never thought about a book launch. You did a book launch. Every single reader of the E Myth does a book launch because what they say is, hey, Jerry, you got to read this book. Hey, Judy, you got to read this book. Hey, Jimmy, you got to read this book. Hey, I built my practice on this book. I mean, everything I do is all about this book. You got to read this book. That's what happened. It's it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. So here I am, Mr. Stupid, because I'm just the beneficiary of all this. You got it. I'm the messenger. Right. Well, and I, and Michael, you'll appreciate this. I mean, I've been, I go around and speak in the industry at a lot of events and big events, 6,000 agents here and there. And every time I talk about, you know, get the E-Myth book off your shelf. I, I, I mean, I'm really shocked. Like we must have read this 20 years ago and then forgot it was there. And it's like, pull the book off your shelf, freaking blow the dust off the binding and open the dang thing and read it again. Every single person I've said that to actually goes out of their way to either call me, email me, and say, oh, my gosh, I'm so glad you said that. It is the best book I've ever read. And it's like, yeah, I've ever read back then. And and actually, I just wanted to give a quick preference, too. This is how Michael and I cross paths is I did that 20 years ago. I read it, but the difference was I implemented the entire book. Let me, let me just let me just interrupt yeah. you, Brett. Yeah. Everybody reads the book. Nobody does the The book. book. Right. Difference between the people who read the book and then do the book is the difference between followers and leaders. The leaders who read that book and realize it's a prescription for unheard of growth. And that it is, in fact, at the heart of every multiple magnificently growing company in your industry right there at the heart of it that they don't do it is the sin it's oh, just astonishing because it, it's sitting right there and it hey it was simple enough that i implement you talk about you mr <laughs> stupid i'm mr stupid stupid and i even implemented it 
But, you know, and it really took um, a major tragedy in my life to lose my wife that I actually realized 20 years later, oh my gosh, I was out of my business for really about eight or nine months, but I sat in a hospital room with her for five months in a coma. And yeah. I lost her in November. And then it was that February that I was sitting here and I saw the book sitting on my shelf and I went, oh my gosh, Michael's the reason I was able to spend five months with her in the hospital. And I had to track you down just to thank you for that. And it didn't hit me till that moment. And that's when we connected and you realized this kid really did do the e-myth, <laughs> you know? Yeah. This kid really did. <laughs> and as I, well, and so the purpose of today's call is to talk about the next biggest thing. I mean, it's like what this book has done in 30 years, the new book beyond the E-Myth is about to shatter that one completely out of the charts. Um, because as I'm going through all this, I'm going through the course that you had. I mean, I've already been through it, but I'm going through it multiple times going through the material in the book, being an ambassador for the book and helping this be the biggest launch of all time for one reason, which you're going to share with us, is that every business needs to just do this. I mean, it's that simple. I don't know if you can dumb it down or make it any simpler than what you've got going on in the e beyond the e-myth. But I'm going to let you tell the audience what beyond the e-myth really is for you and what you're bringing to the business world. And as we're talking to realtors, you are a business. I mean, this, he's talking to you. Okay. Yeah. So, and we could be talking to chiropractors. We could be talking to optometrists. We could be talking to uh, anybody and everybody in every phase or facet of what might be called a commercial enterprise um, because our books are everywhere. So understand here we're talking to real estate guys, but I could be talking to anybody anywhere and the story would be identically the same. In short, it's an absolute. It's an absolute. It's not a relative. It's an absolute. And until someone realizes that what the e-myth truly is, is an absolute compelling logic. For step one, step two, step three, etc., of creating a great growing company, not just going to work on your job, but great, creating a great, until they understand that, they truly don't appreciate it. But when you say that the e myth liberated you from your work, your day to day work, your day to day work as a real estate agent, to sit with your wife for eight months without being concerned about the loss of income that would happen to every single real estate guy listening to us right now if they were to take off from what they do every day for eight months, they wouldn't have anything to come back to. Right. When you came back, it was still flourishing. And with two Understand. people, and with two people running my business. Think about that. <laughs> so anybody who's listening here, it sounds like a miracle. It's not a miracle. It's a miracle I ever met Ray Kroc. Yeah. It's a miracle I ever walked into McDonald's thinking hamburger and walked out without a hamburger, but with food that would last me for the rest of my life and yours. It's stunning. That, in fact, that occurred at all. It's a miracle. And I want to share with you why beyond the e-myth. The evolution of an enterprise from a company of one to a company of 1,000. And I referred to that earlier in our conversation. I said, everybody reads my book. Well, they may not finish it, but everybody reads my book. But only a handful of people do my book. I'm going to correct that. This is my 80th, 80th and a half year on the planet. So I've decided, I've made the choice, I've made the decision to transform the state of small business worldwide in earnest by dumbing down my books, my 28 books, into the handbook for anybody who's willing to become a great student of the system that I have laid out in Beyond the E-Myth 
Step one, step two, through step eight. And with a little bit of will and a little bit of discipline, any stupid guy in the street <laughs> can take this new book and implement it. And I am determined that everybody gets to do that. Why? Look at the economy, 20 trillion and growing in debt. Look at the reality, 95 million people unemployed in these United States. Employable people are no jobs. Look at the reality, small businesses are starting each year here in these United States, fewer and fewer and fewer, but the failure rate is identically the same. Only a small fraction of them will reach five years. Hear that. Most fail. Most people fail. I'm absolutely determined to do something about that in the years left. Now, I've got, according to my wife, I'm going to live to 146, so you don't get away without dealing with me. You understand? <laughs> I, I like your 160. Let's go over 160. Let's do a okay, second I'm, 80th birthday. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the chief aggravator. That's what I am. <laughs> I'm going to piss everybody off because I got the truth right here in my hand, and I put it in a book. Step one, step two, step three, step four, five, six, seven, eight, and every single one of you get to do it. But you got to do step one first. You got to do step two second. You got to do step three. Th you get the point. So, it's a process. Yeah. It's an absolute process, and it can be applied in every company on the planet. Now, when you begin to apply this, and you're going to do this with every single real estate agent on the planet, Brad, so help me God, you're committed. Yeah. When that happens, the real estate industry will grow exponentially. Because the whole idea of part-time guys sucking wind, selling a house every seven months, doing it, doing it, doing it, and going to sleep in the process is ended. Nobody gets to do that anymore. Why? Because I've created a system for growth. So I want to share that with you here so that we can share it with everybody listening in. First well, of all, actually, Michael, w -W yes, to sorry. set that up real quick, because it is simple steps. And like I said earlier, I mean, I did it. So it even in e -Myth, it was simple. And beyond the e-myth is even more simple. Why do we make it so difficult? Why, Like I'm sharing this, what I've experienced with you and put in place, and agents can't grasp, this is too easy. This is too simple. And they want to make it, well, we all want to make it more difficult than it really is. Is there anything you can give us to put that filter through as you give us these steps? Well, yeah, understand your influence. The influence from the outside world says it's difficult. The influence from the outside world says it's complicated. The influence from the outside world, whether it be your mother, your father, your teacher, your, your whomever it might be, the, the, the broker who you have your little desk in or whatever, they all say, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. You got to be born good if you're going to be good. You got to really be brilliant. If you're going to create something brilliant, you got to really be, you got to really, but you don't have to be. You just have to be the one who's absolutely open to the gift you've been given at birth. I like to say, if we're born in the image of God, and I believe that's what we're told, we're born in the image of God. If we're born in the image of God, then the logic says we're born to create. And if we're born to create, we're born to create a world fit for God. But a world fit for God would be an enormously successful world. A world fit for God would be a world in which creativity is the root heart of everything we do. If we're truly in a world fit for God, Order would be stunningly beautiful. There wouldn't be chaos where I am. There wouldn't be confusion where I am. There would be order, visual order, emotional order, 
functional order, financial order. That's all we're setting out to do, Brad. All we're setting out to do is to make it simple. And that's what I've done in Beyond the E-Myth. It's called Beyond E-Myth, Beyond Failure, Beyond the Mistaken Idea that a guy who owns his own little real estate company is an entrepreneur, when in fact he isn't. He's a technician suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. Beyond the mistakes we all make, I'm saying we're going to start it at new by truly awakening the new entrepreneur within every single one of us with a blank piece of paper and beginner's mind. You see, everybody tries to get you to fix their broken business. I'm not going to try to fix your broken business at all. I'm saying you shouldn't try to fix your broken business at all. You should, instead of going to work on old code like everybody tries to do, if they try this at all, and they don't, I'm saying you should go to work on Nuco, not the company that isn't working, but the company you're going to create to work. Now think about that. You get to start from scratch today. And people say, yeah, well, what do I do about all that? Well, just keep on doing it, doing it, doing it. But set aside the time here to enter the new dreaming room with me. Now, when I say with me, understand with every single new dreaming room leader who will be out there on the planet, in 150 cities around this country, it's going to be there, it's going to be there, it's going to be there. But right now with me, just enter the new dreaming room with me with a blank piece of paper and beginner's mind. I'll walk you through the process of building the foundation for growth, a dream, a vision, a purpose, and a mission. An entrepreneur is a dreamer a thinker, a storyteller, a leader. A dreamer, a thinker, a storyteller, a leader. I have a dream, Dr. Martin Luther King said. I have a vision, Steve Jobs said. I have a purpose, Ray Kroc said. I have a mission, the Google boys said. And what happened? Boom! That's what's going to happen to you. And that's so extraordinary. Yeah, it is. And I mean, I love what you're talking about because you here I am with Michael Gerber and we're going to fix the economy. <laughs> we're not going to wait on some politician to do it or some president to do it. This beyond the e-myth can fix the economy, which means make all of our lives better. So I, I want to get right to what's in the book so everybody can really be excited about beyond the e-myth, what's coming out and how to get to the book and and some other stuff that you got going on coming up. So. Super. Well, let let me just say, right here and right now, you can get your preview of the new book called Beyond the E-Myth, The Evolution of an Enterprise from a Company of One to a Company of One Thousand by going to www.beyondemyth.com. Notice beyondemyth.com. You can immediately go there and you can immediately download your free preview of that book and then buy it and read it. And when you do that, you'll get it. And if you don't get it, I don't care. Come join me in the new dreaming room and I'll beat you about the head and shoulders. In short, you're going to get it, Charlie, no matter what. Why? Because You have to. You understand you've got to. You understand that ultimately your company, Brad, I'm talking to you right now, your company is being prepared for sale. Now hear that. Every single real estate agent on the planet owns a company. I call it a company of one. It's a company of one because it depends upon you. If you don't go to work, it doesn't work. If you don't do it, it doesn't get done. If it doesn't get done, you don't make any money. And so, understand, because you don't have the simple process for creating a great company, a great growing company for sale, because you think like a technician, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, 
busy, 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 busy. I got to cure you of that. <laughs> you can't create a company for sale. Your company, I'm saying to everybody, is a product for sale. But you got to go to work on it in exactly the way I'm going to teach you. You got it? I it's get simple. it. I get it. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> it's simple, guys. It's simple, 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 simple. We can confuse it and confuse it and confuse it, but it's simple, 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 and you don't have to be brilliant. You just have to be determined. Let me say that again. You don't have to be brilliant. You just have to be determined. So here's the foundation. A dream, a vision, a purpose, and a mission. In 1977, when I started my first company, it was called the Michael Thomas Corporation, a business development firm. We had a dream. And our dream was to transform the state of small business worldwide. We also had a vision. And our vision was to invent the McDonald's of small business consulting. We also had a purpose. And our purpose was that every independently owned business, tiny business, could be as successful as a McDonald's franchisee was. And we had a mission, and our mission was to invent the business development system that we could deliver through relative novices, not business experts, but novices, beginners, using our intelligent system, and it would be applicable to every company on the planet. That's how we started the Michael Thomas Corporation, and that's what we did. So we went to work on the Michael Thomas Corporation with that picture in our mind to transform the state of small business worldwide, to invent the McDonald's of small business consulting, to make it possible for independently owned small companies like yours to be as successful as a McDonald's franchisee, to build the system through which that could be done. We did that. We grew that. We accomplished that. And I communicated that in 28 books since we started that in 1977. Now, why do I tell you that? I tell you that because what I've done, I'm teaching you to do. At the same time as we did that, starting out with the Michael Thomas Corporation, up until today, we have worked one-on-one -on -one with over 100,000 small business clients. No one on the planet has ever done that except us. We invented the entire business coaching industry. They call it now executive coaching. They call it business to business coaching. They call it life coaching. They call it and call it and call it and call it. All of it's nonsense. In short, the system is the solution. The problem is most coaches don't have one. And most coaches aren't entrepreneurs. Most coaches are technicians doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. Busy, 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 busy. All caught up in this notion of personal branding. Personal branding is nonsense. If anybody honestly buys the idea of personal branding, you just missed the whole point. Understand, the point is, it's not supposed to be about you. It's supposed to be about it. What is it? It is the one that produces the result you're promising to do. Let me tell you about it. Every great real estate agent should be saying, let me tell you about it, not let me tell you about me. But what does every real estate agent tell you about? Me, me, it's my people, it's me, it's my people, it's me, it's my people, it's me. We're better, we care more, we're, I mean, it goes on and on and on. It's the ludicrous, most tragic reality on the planet. It's exactly the opposite of what we have been teaching people to do. And the people who get it, the people who get it are people who are blessed. When Brad Korn said, when my wife took ill, I was able to sit with her at the hospital and not be here working my tail off just to make sure I could pay the bills. Hear that. It worked. Brad didn't. 
And because it worked, the company Brad turnkeyed, Brad's life worked. Because Brad was now available to the woman he loved. I'm saying that to every single one of you. And I'm old enough for you to hear it. Because if I have to be 97 to make this point to you, you're absent. You ain't home. And if you ain't home, nothing is. Do you get me? This is my calling. This is why I'm here on earth. This is why I'm bringing this to you. Because every single one of you in your own economy of one have the potential to make a difference in the world. In short, it ain't going to happen like Brad said from the top down. Doesn't matter whether it's Trump or Hillary. Doesn't matter whether it's Clinton or Bush. Doesn't matter whether it's Jerry or Judy or Jim or Jack. Doesn't matter whether it's a woman. Doesn't matter whether he's black. Doesn't matter whether he's Hispanic. Doesn't matter whether he's white. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. All of that are the issues they create to distract you from the true issue that your life depends upon you and God. And until you become clear about that and truly become a student, not of the arcane, not of the complex, not of the impossible, but of the stupidly simple that I'm going to share with you, until you do that, the game's over. You might as well just quit because the rest of your life is just going to be doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, 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 sucking wind, big time for all the wrong reasons. Join me in this. I'm saying that to you. Join me in this. Join me in this movement. And as you join us, Brad and me, Liz Delia, my wife and partner, the CEO of our company, Michael E. Gerber Companies, and all of the people who are participating in this movement throughout the world, when you join us in this movement, you're joining us to transform the state of the economy worldwide. And guess what? You've got the power to do it. Yeah. And here's what I love about real estate is we really do have a – I call it the core responsibility for a lot of the economy is tied to home ownership, repair, um, living food, shelter, cars, all that stuff. The real estate agent has the unbelievable opportunity to really get to have that relationship that is the core piece for just everybody's lifestyle, right? So I look at you know, applying beyond the e-myth to really make our business make a difference in people's lives. And this has been my mission in real estate was to make sure that if somebody's going to move every five to seven years, shouldn't that be the most incredible experience of their life? And fortunately for me, when I read the e-myth early on, I grabbed the three-legged stool and that was the core of everything I did. I had to capture my leads. I had to convert them. So that was you know, one piece of building my pipeline and getting that so full that it just spits out 100 sales a year. But the third one was the, the customer fulfillment system or what I call the client experience. I had to create a system to make sure it was like McDonald's. You go there, you get the same burger every time. Or, you know, if you go to the Ritz Carlton, you get the same. I loved your Ritz Carlton um, example about, you know, where they had your favorite wine sitting at the dinner table. They had your newspaper sitting in front of your door and everybody had their little piece that they grabbed that information. Um, so where, what does the real, well, every business needs to do this, but let's just say from a real estate agent's perspective or any small business owner, what's their first step to really get going? And probably more importantly, we've got a lot of high, high end business individuals that do run big real estate businesses. What can they do if they want to jump in right now and get involved before the book is even launched? What are the things that they need to be, you know, could get involved with? And then what do most of us need to really do first thing to really get on this movement and make a difference? Well, the very first thing any one of them can do, <clears throat> the very first thing, they can do that right now. 
and you can provide them with access to that. I'm leading my very first new dreaming room in Carlsbad, California, on December 9th, 10th, and 11th. I'm leading that dreaming room because I am turnkeying that dreaming room to replicate myself in 150 cities nationwide, while at the same time moving out to Australia, to New Zealand, to Japan, to South Korea, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. In short, it is a universal system. The very first step in that universal system is to black out everything you believe to be true about real estate, everything you believe to be true that you've been told by everybody who's told you everything they believe to be true about what it takes to be successful in your industry and come to the dreaming room and allow me to lead you through the process of discovering your dream, your vision, your purpose, and your mission. Not the dream you think you have, not the vision you think you have, not the purpose you think you have, not the mission you think you have. New Co., a blank piece of paper, and beginner's mind. That's the most important thing anyone who intends to become a leader in his or her life, whether it be in real estate or not, that's the very first thing you must understand. We're not here to fix what's not working. We're here to create what will. And in order to create what will, you've got to let go of all your old habits and beliefs about what is. That's the first thing. Join me in the dreaming room. It's a $5,000 ticket. Just show up. But you got to register because there are only so many seats. So I'm simply saying, Brad will probably come to you and say, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. You got to do this. That's the first thing. Now, the book comes out on the 7th. So obviously, I've just given you the way you can acquire the book. Get the book. Read the book. Read the book once. Don't take any notes. Read the book twice. Don't take any notes again. And then read the book three times. And when you've done that, you'll understand completely the new process that I'm bringing to the street. This is how you do it. This is what you do. This is why you do it. This is what's going to happen when you do it. And let me describe the process. Step one is the dream. Step two is the vision. Step three is the purpose. Step four is the mission. Put those four together, and you've got the platform for the growth of NUCO. Once you've got the platform for growth of NUCO, I call it the Zeitgeist. Look it up, Z-E-I-T-G-E-I-S-T. Look it up, look it up, go to the dictionary. You'll understand what Zeitgeist means. Zeitgeist is what Apple is. Zeitgeist is what Microsoft is. Zeitgeist is what every extraordinary company lives and has within. It's their reason for being. It goes beyond selling real estate goes beyond working for a living, goes beyond doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. It's your philosophy for being. Every single one of us have an existential reason for being alive. What is that reason? That's what comes out in the new dreaming room. That's what you're going to discover in this conversation between us. And I will absolutely promise you it will happen. I have this perfect example of a company you probably all know about. It's called Infusionsoft. Brad, you know Infusionsoft. Oh, yeah. They're big in the real estate industry now because of you, actually. <laughs> when Infusionsoft's leaders, the executive team, the founders and the executive team came to my dreaming room about seven years ago, they were very, very, very small, and they pretty much had resigned themselves to it. They thought they were in the software business. In the dreaming room, one of them came up to me before we started and said, what is this dreaming stuff? It sounds awfully touchy-feely. We're not touchy-feely guys. You understand? We're technology guys. We're not touch. I said, just shut up and go sit down. <laughs> That's what I said to Scott. Just shut up and go sit down and come to me when we're done and tell me what happened. This ain't touchy-feely. This is about as pragmatic as a heart attack. If you don't get this, you got nothing. But once you get this, 
It will go up on the wall of your company, believe me, and in the walls of your people's hearts and minds, believe me. And they did. At the end of that dreaming room, they all came up to me and they said, almost stuttering, we never could have imagined. And I said, no, you couldn't. That's the tragedy. No, you couldn't. But understand, none of the clients you supposedly providing this great software to can't imagine either. So when you now understand that you're the king of growth, when you now understand what growth really means, when you now understand the business you're really in rather than the business you thought you were in, real estate, technology, whatever it might be, when you understand that now and take this in and take it back to your offices in Arizona, Something so staggering is going to occur. You're just not even prepared for it. Well, that company went back, that tiny company went back, and the story is writ. Today, that company is at over $100 million in annual revenue. On its way in the next five years to hit $1 billion in revenue. That company today has over 35,000 active paying clients. That company today has over 700 employees and hundreds of contractors throughout the world. That company today is nothing like the company it was. But when you walk into that company, their corporate offices, you'll see on the wall our dream, our vision, our purpose, our mission. Every day they live that dream, that vision, that purpose, that mission. That's what infused their zeitgeist their soul, their spirit to go beyond growing just for the sake of making more money. This is not about money, guys. This is about the reason for living. This is about the reason for being. This is about what we just heard about being able to spend that eight months with my wife. This is what this is about. This is about making something important happen. And so the first step in this is the dreaming room. The dream, the vision, the purpose, the mission. Then you go back and do it. Do what? This is core to the process. It's four steps. First, the job. Second, the practice. Third, the business. And fourth, the enterprise. So I'm saying to you, you don't own a business right now. What you got is a job. And what you do is you go to work in the job, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. Then you get a little software. Then you get a little this. And you go to a seminar. Then you go hear this guy. Then you go hear that guy. Doing it, doing it, doing it. Then you get excited about this. And you get excited about that. And everything stays the same. Nothing changes. Three houses a year. Seven houses a year. Eight houses a year. Twelve houses a year. Blah, 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 blah. And then the excuses come. Well, I don't really care about real estate. I mean, I just do this in order to get the benefits. And I really only do this. To, and you hear all the stories, all the stories of all the guys who aren't producing anything. All the stories, all the stories, all the stories, and all the excuses. Time to cut through all of that. In this case, we're going to start on the job. The job is your client fulfillment system. It's what you deliver to your most important customer. The job is your client fulfillment system. And so when you start in NUCO, you're going to go to work on the job, not just in the job, to invent your client fulfillment system. And your client fulfillment system, the product you're there to sell, and the product isn't a home, and the product isn't your time, and the product, you understand, the product is visual, emotional, functional, and financial. The product is the totality of every experience your client will have. You must design, build, launch, and grow that system. Because until you design, build, launch, and grow that system and write it down, you understand, until it's in a book, this is what we do, this is how we do it, this is who we are. Until you do that, you can't scale it. And by scale it, I mean you can't get somebody else to do it as well as you. And if you can't get somebody else to do it as well as you, 
You're sucking wind. Get it? That's what Brad was able to do. He was able to get somebody else to do it as effectively as him. So people wouldn't say, where's Brad? Where's Brad? I need Brad. I need Brad. Where's Brad? Where's Brad? They didn't ask that. You understand? They had Brad in the person who was bringing Brad to them because the personality of Brad's company was Brad. But it was the product of Brad, just like Apple was the product of Steve Jobs. Now hear me, Brad hasn't taken extreme advantage of that. Brad hasn't yet taken extreme advantage, but Brad's going to. I'm telling you, Brad is about to. And as Brad is about to do that, you're going to be about to do that. And then you, 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 but in a completely different way than you imagine right now, sitting here listening to me. So the first step is the job. you got to complete the job. Your job, the chief job of the chief entrepreneurial head of your company, you, is going to design, build, launch, and grow your client fulfillment system. And now you got it in the book. Let me see the book. Let me see the book. Let me see the book. This is how you do it. Step one, step two, step three, step four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you teach other people how to do that. You now go on to the second step in Beyond the E-Myth, and I call it the practice. The practice is the three-legged stool. Lead generation, lead conversion, client fulfillment. Lead generation, how you attract people to you. Lead conversion, how you convert them into clients. And client fulfillment, how you keep your promise. That three-legged stool is your franchise prototype, as I call it. It's who you are. It's what you do. It's how you do it and how you scale it. How you're able now to grow. Because with your client acquisition system and your client fulfillment system in the box, you're now able to replicate them. With the real estate guy number one, with the real estate guy number two, with the real estate guy number three, with the real estate guy number four, number five, number six, number seven, and once you've done that, you've got a business plus a turnkey management system. See the store. See the hamburger stand. See the coffee shop. See, see, see the baristas. See the business. See the business operating right down the street called Starbucks. Your company is going to do identically the same thing as the guy who founded Starbucks did. He created a business that he could turnkey and replicate a thousand times. Now you get to do the very same thing. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me, Michael? No, I'm not. And can you imagine once you do that? Now, once you've got a turnkey business, you're now able to scale it to grow a turnkey enterprise. And what's a turnkey enterprise? It's nothing other than up to seven turnkey businesses plus a leadership system turnkey. Oh, my goodness. It's like Lego blocks. You get me? And everybody else wants you to think it's really, really, really complicated. And here's dummy at 80 and a half years of age telling you it isn't complicated at all. Any dummy can do it. You can. And that dummy becomes the smartest man on the block. So what I want you to do is to become the greatest student you've ever thought to become. We're not going to go out and practice all kinds of arcane nonsense. We're not going to go out and practice all kinds of software. We're not going out and practice all kinds of stuff. You could do this without a computer. Hear me. You could do this without a computer. You could do this without Infusionsoft. You could do this without Microsoft. You could do this without anything. You can do this just with the breath in your Buddy, you could do this with nothing other than what I'm going to give you in Beyond the E-Myth and what I'm going to share with you in the Dreaming Room 
And what I'm going to teach you in Beyond the E-Myth, one-to-one, for less than the cost of a minimum wage kit, teach you, teach you. Yes, that's it. Yes, that's it. No, not that way. This way. No, not that way. This way. No, not that way. This way. Oh, my goodness. How come nobody ever taught me that before? That's what you're going to say. Welcome to the transformation of small business worldwide. Welcome to the transformation of your community. Welcome to the transformation of your family, of your life. Welcome to the transformation of your mind, of your spirit, of your soul. That's what all this is about. Yeah, the... I'm so excited. I mean, really, it it's so unfortunate that I had to go through what I had to go through to get here today. But like I've like I've told you before, I felt like I was crushed so far in the ground, but really it was a slingshot that was launching me to the moon. And for you to come into my life just a month or two after that, um, and because I am about simple. Any realtor that's ever heard me speak or that I coach, it really is keep it simple. So, I mean, that's why I told you, you didn't know me from Adam when I sent you that message, but I wanted you to know that I applied those principles and kept them simple. And I'm able to share that with people in the real estate industry. So now is our time to create the Disneyland. I mean, we can really create the Disney experience for our real estate clients. And if if a real estate agent's passionate about what they're doing and they like helping people and they like making money, a lot of money, the more they help people have a great experience, the more people will come to them. And I look at it this way, like this is my opportunity to not help a hundred people locally or even a thousand people locally, but it's to help a thousand agents help a thousand people locally and go to that, um, I mean, to the company of a thousand. And I know when realtors hear that, they're like, oh my God, I don't want to manage a thousand people. Quit making it so difficult. (laughs) It's simple. So any, uh, I know we're at the end of our time and you've got a lot of stuff going as we're launching this book in December 7th. And we've got the dreaming room in Carlsbad, California, um, the 9th, 10th and 11th, which is a weekend starts on a late Friday night. So we can fly in on Friday. Um, and is there anything else you want to leave with our listeners um, about just everything, what's going on, or, or what's your parting words, I should say? My parting words are the same as my parting words have been for the past 40 years. Stop thinking about it. Nike has the greatest expression in the world. Just do it. So I just ask you to trust me to open your minds and your hearts and your spirits. Become little kids again to not be suspicious, to let go of all the communication you've received up to now, to forget about everything everybody has ever told you, to sell you something, and just open your hearts and minds to the possibility that, in fact, you can become someone you've never thought you could become before. And I'm saying that to you with that confidence that comes from 40 years of transforming the state of small business worldwide through my ability to transform the state of small business owners worldwide to become emerging, awakening entrepreneurs. That's my invitation to you. It's very, very simple. It's straightforward. It's from my heart. I will be there, God willing, on December 9th, 10th, and 11th. This is not my intention to sell you a seat. It's my intention to open your heart. Just let go, let God, and be there. And something, I promise you, truly miraculous will occur when you come. So, Brad, thank you so much. I'm loving our relationship. I'm loving the spirit you bring to our relationship, and I love the fact, Brad, that you can think of the largest real estate company on the planet. It pales in comparison to what is about to occur. Love you. Thank I've got you. A, I've got a tight seatbelt on. Hey, is Luz hiding behind the camera there? Is Luz Dahlia hiding no, in there? All right. She isn't. Well, I don't think so. Tell her. I don't. <laughs> 
No, don't see her. <laughs> Tell her I love her. I love you guys. I'm so glad you're in my life. And I thank will. you for sharing this with, with all my friends in real estate. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.